This is a liquid ring vacuum pump, which is typically used for the table suction system on CNC machines. And this is how it works. Water comes into the motor from this inlet over here. And these fins on the impeller of the motor spin the water so fast that it forces the water to spin along the outside walls and at the same time force any water in the center to be forced out because of the centrifugal force. So the excess water goes out over here and heads back to the tank and the water that remains causes a very low negative pressure of vacuum of 0.1 atmosphere. And a vacuum is created over here which is where the CNC's table suction system is attached to. Great, that covers the motor side of things. Now let's look at the water supply. What you must achieve is constant water supply at the right temperature so as to protect the motor. To start with, the water must never be below the outlet valve because obviously this will stop water going into the motor. So the water level must be checked before operation, always. And also, the water level must always be higher than the motor itself. The water should be kept under 40 degrees for the best result. So you should top the water level up with cold water. Even ice cubes can be used. Some people make use of multiple water tanks so that the water is cooled over the entire volume of water before re-entering the motor. This also works. Regardless of your choice, it is highly recommended to drain the pump and refill with fresh water at least every three months. And antifreeze and soluble oils can also be added to the water to prevent rust. Now let's talk about the importance of air tightness and valves. It is important to open the valve of the water reservoir before switching on the pump to ensure water enters the pump before operation. If the pump runs without water, it will almost certainly cause damage to the seal. And if the pump runs dry, it will overheat quickly and cause the impeller to crack. And if the impeller, which is spinning at high speed, gets damaged, it can shatter and cause even more damage inside the motor, resulting in an unfixable body as well. Now, there is also a seal behind the impeller. And there is a spring that houses the inner seal, making sure it opens and closes. And if this spring overheats, it will overstretch and not allow the seal to settle back into its correct position. And that in turn will damage the impeller. In this case, the motor can still be working fine, but when switched off, the pump will leak from the bottom. So a leak from the bottom is a sign of a damaged seal. Simply put, you do not want to run the motor dry. However, it is just as important to close the valve when the pump is not in use for extended periods of time, for example overnight. Water pressure from the water tank tends to balance itself out over time. And if the pump is not spinning, the possibility of water backflow to the CNC table becomes pretty high. And that's going to get messy because the water is going to go back into the water table. You could place an additional valve at the vacuum outlet to stop any water backflow. To open and close the vacuum on the application side, which also helps to protect the motor. But regardless, the best practice is turn the valve on before starting work and turn it off at the end of the day. The power of the liquid vacuum pump lies in its air tightness. That is why we make use of rubber cord and silicone to ensure air tightness throughout the system. And this also stops any other residue from getting into the system and landing up in the impeller, which will almost certainly cause damage. The sign of impeller damage are clicking noises coming from the pump body when the motor is running, caused by the debris of a shattered impeller.
good. And with that covered, let's talk about what we can do if something does go wrong. The most common problem is that the wire burns out on the motor. This can be repaired by an electrical motor rewinding specialist. The cooling fan is easily replaceable should it get damaged. And when it comes to the body of the pump, typically just replacing any damaged seals and replacing the impeller resolves the problem. But you do need a specialized tool to remove the impeller. Fortunately, AM does have one of these specialized tools. Lastly, a qualified plumber can take care of any leaking issues from the water reservoir to the motor and back. And you will be pleased to know that AM stocks a large selection of parts specifically in support of the liquid vacuum pumps that it sells. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it was of use to you. And we'll catch you in the next one.